Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to Kila Chari Torah's Daily Halacha Review for Wednesday, September 21st. We've been talking about the laws and customs of Erev Yom Kippur, uh, preparing for Yom Kippur. Uh, it is a mitzvah for every man to immerse in a mikveh on Erev Yom Kippur to purify himself and also as an element of repentance. Uh, just as a convert is required to immerse in a mikveh. So, as a consequence, even boys and girls should immerse themselves in a mikveh. You should be sure, uh, when immersing in the mikveh, when toiveling oneself, that there is no chatzitza on your body. We learned about this a little bit in uh, our uh, Talmud class on Tuesday mornings uh, with regard to, uh, it's, a com- it's a conversation in the early part of tractate sukkah. A chatzitza is an interposition, an interruption between one's body and the water. So if you have a bandage, a band-aid, a plaster, even stitches sometimes, uh, can be considered a chatzitza, an intervening substance between a person's body and the mikvah water. So you have to, uh, you have to uh, uh, take that into consideration. The uh, most appropriate time for the immersion is after midday. Uh, it's a custom that the head of every household prepares a candle for the household as a reminder that on Yom Kippur, remember this is 40 days after Rosh Chodesh Elul, uh, uh, on the 10th of Tishrei, Moshe descended from Mount Sinai with the second tablets came down and brought us the uh, Luchos Shnios, the second uh, tablets. Uh, and the Torah uh, is called light, Torah Zu Ora. And uh, the, the uh, head of the household prepares another candle for the soul of his deceased father and mother, if in fact they are gone, uh, to make atonement for them. Uh, because, as the footnote adds, the deceased are also judged in this period and require atonement. It's also why we say Yisker and give tzedakah uh, while we're on that topic. Uh, it's customary that one candle is lit in the house to burn until the end of Yom Kippur, and Havdal is recited over that. Uh, and one candle is lit in the shul, in the synagogue. These candles should not be made of wax taken from the houses of idolatry. Some people become upset if their candle is extinguished on Yom Kippur, although in reality there's no reason to worry about this. Still, it's best to avoid it. From this you see that it's good to take into account uh, when the Jews are going to get upset. So you don't want to avoid that. It's best, therefore, to give the candle to the shamash, uh, give it to the shul sexton who will put it wherever he wishes so that no one will know who's his candle. So if one blows out, nobody's going to say, ah, it's probably somebody else's. You should take the candle to the synagogue when you go there for mincha so it's in its proper place to be lit before twilight because later when people come to the shul for the mire of service, they are pressed for time. When you come for kol nederi, it's very busy and you might get distracted and uh, uh, forget what to do with your candle. So you see a couple things about taking the feelings of the Jewish people into mind in this very important halacha. So bear that in mind uh, and make your plans accordingly.